Hey guys, Patriot coming to you from the desktop with the Nightcore TM26. This is uh, Nightcore's newest uh, multiple LED or multiple XML LED light uh, housing four XML U2 LEDs. Peak lumens of 3500 and uh, 43,000 candela, so it's quite a thrower and it has quite a bit of output. Hopefully I can get through this uh, video this time. I keep running into problems. I mean, it's just like, it's been probably one of the most five abusive uh, reviews that I've ever done as far as uh, just uh, maintaining my uh, <laughs> maintaining my cool. It's definitely been a challenge. But uh, I finally got some new computer gear. I've got a, a new MSI uh, laptop over here with a 3630QM motherboard and a GeForce GTX 675 MX uh, video card and so I'm crushing through the video so at least that part isn't a headache anymore it's just kinda getting through the review between the doorbells and phone calls and dead camera batteries and mixed up files and too long of a video all that sort of thing anyhow uh, I will put some beam shots or some beam uh, beam video up near the beginning of this for the people who just want to see that and head out they don't want to uh, stay for the the rest of the review and and that's fine in any case uh, this is the box that it came in one of the things that I was a little bit worried about when I first saw the TM26 advertised and the pictures that were shown of it of course it was coming on the heels of the TM or Tiny Monster 15 which was quite a bit larger than the one that it replaced, the TM11. It had that little charging port in it, deeper reflectors, and a few other minor changes. And the the size of that light kind of turned me off. So when I saw this big quad reflector arrangement, I thought, oh no, an, another bigger Nightcore light? Well, it turned out to be just the opposite. It didn't actually go bigger. It went smaller. Look at that little sweet light. The longer I spend with this light, the more I like it. So we're housing a lot of uh, power, a lot of throw, and a lot of technology in a little tiny package. In fact, you can see here next to the Night Eye 30 uh, that I'll be showing you video footage of. You can see it's shorter overall uh, length than the Night Eye 30. Also, one of the ways that they got around that size problem with this quad head arrangement was they went with a smaller uh, reflector than was utilized in the Night Eye 30 or 40. Of course, Night Eye is a different uh, company altogether than Night Corp, but um, this is what I have. I don't have a TM15, and I no longer have uh, a TM11 because I sold that to get this light here. In any case, uh, let's go ahead and just give you a good close look at this light. You can see I've got a lot of nice centered XML U2 uh, LEDs there. Everything's been done very nicely. You can see it's got a nice beveled edge here. Everything, all the machining on this light is gorgeous. It is hard anodized or type 3 uh, anodizing. You can see the OLED or the organic LED display panel right here that's going to give us a voltage and temperature and uh, estimated hours of runtime that sort of thing TM26 Night Eye 30 it's a slightly cooler beam it's got a larger uh, donut in the middle of the beam TM26 pretty close in throw but uh, the TM26 does appear to outdo the uh, Night Eye 30 a little bit difference in lumens one is 2000 the other is uh, around 3500 so a lot more light going down range alright now side by side okay you can see the difference in throw there between the two especially as I get out there a little bit.
Hope that gives a good representation of those two lights. And I'm going to shut that one off and switch over to the TM26. TM26. Night I-30. It's a slightly cooler beam. It's got a larger uh, donut in the middle of the beam. TM26. Pretty close in throw, but... Uh, those of you who don't own uh, the TM15 or TM11 or Night Eye or TM31 by Through Night, and maybe you have a Night Core uh, EA4, there's kind of a comparison with the Night Core EA4. You can see that it's not that much bigger. I mean, it's bigger, but we're talking single XML versus uh, quadruple MX, uh, XML. So, um, Pretty impressive to see that you can even hold these in the same frame together and this doesn't absolutely dominate this one or the EA4 in size. So that was the most shocking thing to me overall is the size of this light and just how small it actually is. Let's go ahead and unscrew the battery cap and I'm going to hold this up close to the camera so that you can hear it and I'm going to shut my face. About three full turns there to get that off. I'm going to stick in some Ready Last uh, 3400 milliamp hour cells. These do not have a full charge uh, because I've had to do a couple of different takes here during this video. I've actually run down the batteries. I've got another set on the charger right now. I actually started running out of 18650s between my beam shots last night. You can see it displays night core and we're still at four volts there so uh, four volt standby. Uh, so I've got a little bit of juice, enough to get us through the test here. All right, let's dig right into the function. And uh, this is going to be just like the, uh, the TM-15 before it. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here to make it visible. Hopefully you'll be able to see the uh, display here as well. The battery switch is uh, very similar to a camera style switch or a, a shutter on a camera. Halfway has a function and then uh, full depression has a function. On a camera you touch it halfway to kind of focus it, full uh, depression to take the picture. Likewise to get into the daily modes with this camera we're going to push it uh, uh, part way down to enter its daily mode. Its first daily mode by the way is a mere three lumens. Really really cool. I think that the TM15 was had a low of either 95 or 65 lumens, I'm trying to remember, but it was substantially more than this. It sounds like, it seems like Nightcore has listened to the consumer and a lot of us have been requesting a lower low mode, so we think that's pretty cool. All right, that's better. So here's our daily modes. We're on low right now, three lumens. Soft press again, gets me up to 95 lumens. Another soft press, 540 lumens. Another half press or soft press, 1700 lumens is level four and then another press back down to one. So I've got four daily modes. If, uh, let's say, I bump it up to level two here and I press the uh, display uh, function, it will show me voltage, current voltage, including the battery sag. Uh, it will give me a visual representation of the battery charge. Might be kind of handy, even though I'm typically gonna be looking at the voltage if I was bouncing around in a vehicle or something and I could only see that display, uh, at least it gives you a quick indication. Press it again, it's gonna give you your estimated run times in hours, in this case at 95 lumens, 41 hours. Press it one more time and that is the uh, temperature of the, uh, the circuit board in the light or wherever they're measuring that from. I imagine that the exterior of the light is gonna be a little bit cooler than where it's measuring it. All right, so those are the daily modes, and in each of those daily modes here, let me bump it up one mode here. So now we're at 540 lumens, and you can see 3.92 volts, seven hours at that output level, approximate, and 24 degrees Celsius again. All right, to shut the light off uh, from any of the daily modes, full press and let go. 
and it enters standby mode. The light is never really off. It's in standby mode. You can see this blinks every three seconds or so. This will shut off after 10 seconds, which it just did. If I take, if I disconnect the battery tube, that actually shuts the light off completely. But when I screw it back in, you'll see night core displayed and now it's back in standby mode. So if you really truly want to, well, we'll get to that uh, in just a minute. So those are the daily modes. In order to go to turbo mode, just depress the button all the way. There's turbo mode, 3,500 lumens. Press it again, it shuts off. From any of the daily modes, in this case, we're at level three or 540 lumens. From any of these modes, I can half press and hold to get to turbo mode. If I half press and hold again, it's going to return to the previous level, in this case level 3. From 1700 lumens, again, I can press and hold, and that's a half press by the way, and it bumps it up into turbo mode. Half press and hold again, bumps it back down to the previous mode, which again in this case was uh, level 4. Okay, I can actually shut the light back off and enter the daily modes. It remembered 1700 lumens, so it has daily mode memory and will return to wherever it was before. We're back in three lumen mode or level one now. All right, uh, this light also has some hidden functions in it from any of the on positions. Right now we're uh, uh, in level uh, one, three lumens. I can double tap and get me to strobe. It's an especially annoying strobe. Typically, strobe doesn't bother me or throw me off too much, but when I stare at that on the wall, I don't know if it's the frequency. It's not a triple frequency like a lot of other lights, but it is horrendously annoying. Like, it, it even gets me, and again, I'm not, I'm not sensitive to it. If I press and hold halfway while it's in strobe mode, or not hold, but just do a half press, it enters SOS mode. It's kind of cool to have. It does appear to be at full output on SOS mode, Maybe not a mode that I'll use a whole lot, but if I press and uh, do a half press again, it goes to beacon mode. So beacon mode is really, really cool. Um, from here, we can do a half press and go back to strobe, or we can just shut it off if we want. And now we're back in standby again. So uh, let's just go through those modes really quick once more, and uh, then we'll talk about the, uh, the lockout. So to get to a daily mode, half press. It'll remember whatever mode you were at before, in this case level one, which is three lumens. Another half press gives you level two, another half press level three, another half press level four. Uh, at any one of these uh, four modes, you can do a half press and hold to get to turbo. Half press and hold again, get you back to daily mode. Half press again, back to turbo. Uh, so it's a very flexible, I think it's probably one of the best interfaces for a single button light like this. And after you get a feel for the switch, it's actually pretty easy. Now I'm using it in a way that I normally would be using it. Normally I'd have it in hand like this. In this way it's very easy to feel how far that button is going in. If I hold it in a different direction, and I'm using like the side of my thumb, then I have to get used to it that way, but it's easy to overstep. And if I'm going to the next daily mode, I can accidentally go too far and turn it on the turbo or turn it off. So uh, it takes a little getting used to, but once you're used to it, it's, uh, it's very easy to manipulate. Okay, from any mode, we can double click and we go to strobe. Half press from there, we go to SOS. Another half press, we go to beacon. Another press, it shuts it off. Or you can cycle through those three hidden modes again if you want to. Lockout mode on this light. From uh, an on position, press and hold. It will flash once, it'll say lockout, and it'll shut the light off. Now at this point, anything that I press, it's just going to tell me lockout, but it's not going to shut on. In order to get it out of lockout mode, I press and hold and it will return to whatever mode I, left, I last left. So pretty handy there. As far as lockout security goes, not the best. The problem is it's possible for an object or something in a backpack or wherever this light is to press and hold and return this uh, from locked out, mo locked out mode. Right now it's in lockout mode again, but if something presses this button for more than a second,